To be alone is one of the most horrible feelings in the world, and Smeagol would have to endure that loneliness for over 500 years. His only companion was a twisted part of his personality, that of Gollum, who was enslaved to the One Ring, and this darker side of his character slowly consumed his Smeagol persona, until he had forgotten and abandoned almost every remnant of his former self. A decrepit, forlorn creature was left, where once a happy, lively hobbit had stood, and even though it might have seemed impossible to cure Smeagol of this evil, for a moment Frodo had actually been at the very brink of doing so. In today's episode, we'll be unravelling the tragedy of Gollum, and the unfortunate event that robbed him of his redemption. After Gollum led the hobbits up the stairs of Kirith Ungol, he snuck off one night to inform Shelob of the prize that he had brought her. He was determined to betray the hobbits, though after he returned to their resting spot, doubts began to eat away at him. There was something about the way that Frodo was resting in Sam's lap, and the peaceful expressions upon their faces that shook a golem, and for a moment it seemed to awaken his past humanity that he had neglected for so long. We're told that Gollum looked at them. A strange expression passed over his lean, hungry face. The gleam faded from his eyes, and they went dim and grey, old and tired. A spasm of pain seemed to twist him, and he turned away, peering back up toward the pass, shaking his head as if engaged in some interior debate. Then he came back, and slowly putting out a trembling hand, very cautiously he touched Frodo's knee. But the touch was a caress, and for a fleeting moment, could one of the sleepers have seen him, they would have thought that they beheld an old, weary hobbit, shrunken by the years that had carried him far beyond his time beyond friends and kin, and the fields and streams of youth, an old, starved, pitiable thing. From this passage, we see how Smeagol's personality emerged once more, and he started to doubt his plans to lead the hobbits to Shelob. In one of Tolkien's letters, letter 246, Tolkien wrote that at this moment Gollum was at the brink of redemption. Though this chance was lost after Sam woke up and snapped at him. For when Gollum touched Frodo, Frodo stirred softly in his sleep, and this caused Sam to wake up and catch sight of Gollum reaching out at his master. Sam instantly thought that Gollum was up to some mischievous deed, and he snapped at him, calling him an old villain. These cruel words hurt Gollum, and an evil green light returned to his eyes as he withdrew, and he embraced the role of the villain that was so hastily assigned to him. And so, Shelob's lair became inevitable. Now if Sam had reacted differently, the rest of their quest would have turned out quite differently, and Tolkien actually describes it in his letter. He wrote that their entry into Mordor and all the struggles that they would face on their journey to reach Mount Doom would have been different. For, after all, they would have had to find a new passage into Mordor instead of Shelob's lair, and even the end of their journey would have played out in a very different manner. The main character in this ending would have been Gollum rather than Frodo, for as they travelled towards Mount Doom, the conflict within Gollum would grow and he would be torn between his love for Frodo and his repentance on one side and his need for the One Ring on the other. Throughout the rest of their journey, his love for Frodo would grow stronger every day, though his enslavement to the One Ring would eventually overcome it, and he would betray his master once more by either stealing or taking the One Ring through violence. Despite this betrayal, a curious case would play out, for even though Gollum had finally managed to retrieve the One Ring, Tolkien says that in some queer, twisted, and pitiable way, Gollum would have tried to satisfy both his love for his master and his need for the One Ring. 
perhaps even subconsciously. For after he recovered the One Ring, he would have finally managed to satisfy his need to possess it, and then he would choose to sacrifice himself voluntarily for Frodo's sake. And out of the love he felt towards him, Smeagol would cast himself into the fiery abyss of Mount Doom, destroying the One Ring in the process. This choice of Smeagol was only possible thanks to his love for Frodo, for this love allowed him to partially regenerate his character and his former self, and it would have given him a clearer vision after he claimed the One Ring. In that moment, Smeagol would have perceived the evil of Sauron, and he would have suddenly realized that he couldn't use the One Ring, and that he didn't have the strength to keep it from Sauron. And so, Smeagol would have an epiphany of sorts, that the only way to keep it for himself, and to hurt Sauron in the process, was by destroying the One Ring and himself together. And he would have seen that this would be the greatest service that he could offer to Frodo. It's really tragic that Smeagol was robbed of this chance for redemption, though we can hardly blame Sam for reacting in a defensive manner, even if his words were somewhat harsh. He was too sure that Smeagol could not be trusted, and that he was plotting to betray the hobbits, and in a way, Sam was right, for that was indeed Smeagol's plan. However, Sam failed to see the good that remained in Smeagol, no matter how corrupt he had become, and so he wasn't able to perceive Gollum's inner conflict, or understand how Gollum truly did love Frodo, in a sense, on the other hand, Frodo was able to see and nurture the good that remained in Smeagol, and if Sam had managed to understand Frodo and follow his example, then he might have reacted differently to Gollum, which would have allowed Smeagol to achieve the redemption that we discussed earlier. And so, the pity and care that Frodo had showed to Gollum would not have gone to waste. Were you aware of this scenario that we just discussed? And how do you feel about it? Does it make Smeagol's story and character more tragic? And do you think it would have been a better ending to the story? It's great that we can read about this possibility, even if it never came to pass, for it does shed more light on Smeagol's character, and it makes us more sympathetic towards him. We'd like to quickly mention that part of the inspiration behind this video is Gollum's song an original piece that was created for the trilogy, and which was sung in a haunting and beautiful manner by Emiliana Torini. There's a link to it in the video description, and we'd highly recommend that you check it out, for it manages to capture Smeagol's suffering and conflict and the tragic end that awaited him. Perhaps it might even influence the way you see Smeagol's character and story. As always, we'd like to give a quick shout out to all of the patrons that choose to support this channel. Your help makes this channel possible, and your support is deeply appreciated. Particularly the Valar tier patrons, Jacob Williams, Michael Angel, and T. Gorman. And the Wizard tier patrons, James Stodgill, Andrew Burma, Mike Feeney, and Roland Mervold. If you also would like to help and support this channel while unlocking some cool perks, we'll be leaving a link to the Patreon page in the video description. You could also support this channel by checking out our store, and by following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and joining our Discord server. All of these links can be found in the video description. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe to join our fellowship today. Until next time, when we'll once again explore the magical world and lore of Middle-earth.